Namo Amitabha Buddha. Hello everyone. So today I feel like talking about the law of karma. And a question arose from our last week's Dharma talk. And someone asked, can the good deeds they committed cancel out the bad deeds they have committed in the past? Or is it a way for them to avoid negative karma, negative consequences to manifest in their life? So usually just because we have committed good deeds, it doesn't necessarily mean that it can cancel out the effect of bad deeds we have committed in the past. That is why sometimes we see uh, there are some people in this life, they are very good, they are cultivating a lot of good deeds, but you may still see them suffer from really negative bad consequences in their lives. This could be due to the manifestation of the past evil deeds they have committed, maybe not in this life, but past lives. And also we see some people who may have committed bad deeds in this life, but they seem to enjoy a really good life. Why is that? It's also likely due to the manifestation of the good deeds that they have committed in the past. And maybe again from their past lives. And then some people may be like, do we really have past lives? If we do, why we don't remember anything? So not only to talk about past life, we don't remember, just talk about in this lifetime, many things we don't remember. Do you remember what you did before the age of three? So a lot of things in this lifetime we already don't remember, let alone to say past lives. But just because we don't remember doesn't mean that they don't exist. If anything, the law of karma really exists and exists in actuality. The law of karma is also known as the law of cause and effect. If we see a negative situation or a good situation as an effect, then it must have been that there have been a cause in the past. So it's really logical and scientific. And the law of karma can really explain a lot of situations we may not be able to explain that we may deem as unfair in this world because we have not seen the whole of the picture. So the law of karma can run through our lifetimes, the past, present and future. And it's also a complicated topic. And most of us, we cannot really see completely how the law of karma works. But just know that it's really fair. If there is anything that is fair, it would be the law of karma. So for the good deeds we have committed in this lifetime, we may not obtain the fruit of that good deeds until later in our life or even next life or future lifetimes. So think about it like planting an apple tree. Just by sowing the seeds, we may not obtain the fruit of the apple until certain conditions are met. For instance, you still need to water the tree, you need to allow it to expose to sunlight, you need to take good care of it in order to obtain good fruits. This is also like the law of karma. Sometimes when we sow good seeds, we may not obtain good fruits until certain conditions are met. And similarly, for the bad evil seeds we have planted in the past, they may not manifest into reality until certain conditions are met. So there is actually a way for us to avoid negative consequences to manifest in our life if say we have sowed bad seeds in the past. That is to cut off the conditions that may likely make this seed to ripen as negative fruit. So again, using the metaphor of planting a tree, if you know that you have sowed a bad seed in the past, maybe at that time you were not so aware due to ignorant and you sowed this evil seed. And in order to avoid the evil seed to manifest as evil fruit, what you can do is to cut off the conditions to make it ripen. For instance, you can stop watering that tree, you can uh, stop exposing it to the sunlight, you don't take good care of it, and you focus on taking good care of the good tree. So in that way, you can cut off the conditions for make the bad seed to ripen as bad fruit. And this is a way how we may avoid negative karma to manifest into our reality as negative consequences. And I also talked about this before. The best way we can change our karma is also to practice near force by reciting the name of Amitabha Buddha repeatedly. It helps us to purify our mind, which in turn will purify our speech and our actions and which can change our karma 
in the here now and for the future or just any other meditations that you find are helpful for you you can practice that and we should also try our best to cultivate good deeds in our life to cultivate 10 good deeds this will also help generate good karma for us in the future and what is so good about the Pure Land Dharma is that when we practice Nian form, we seek rebirth to the Pure Land. We don't need to become enlightened to seek rebirth. So we actually carry our karma with us in the Pure Land because we are not enlightened yet. So we are not free from all the karma yet. But when we are in the Pure Land, all the negative karmic seeds we bring with us to the Pure Land, they will lie dormant because there is absolutely no conditions in the Pure Land that will possibly give rise to the manifestation of evil karma. So the Pure Land is really the Pure Land. You will not hear any evil word or evil conduct in the Pure Land. You will not even see any evil people in the Pure Land. Everyone is so nice and so enlightened. The environment is just so pure. There is absolutely nothing in the pure land that can make any evil seed to become manifested in the reality. So we can also be free from all our evil karma when we attain rebirth in the pure land. Our karma is only reflected by the grade of rebirth and the time it will take us to realize enlightenment and the final Buddhahood in the Pure Land. But once we arrive in the Pure Land, we will also realize enlightenment and the final Buddhahood fairly quickly. Namo Amitabha Buddha. Namo Amitabha.